So I'm going to show you how to replace front brakes and rotors. This will be the same for pretty much any car or truck other than a couple minor differences which I'll go over when I do this. The only type of brakes this won't work for is drum brakes. If you have drum brakes, I am sorry, those things suck ass to change. So the first thing that you're going to want to do, we're going to be doing the front brakes. If you're doing the front brakes, first thing you want to do for safety is make sure that you have the e-brake on. <clears throat> You're gonna to wanna to lift the hood up also, and then take the cap off the brake fluid reservoir. The reason being is cause when you, you're using old pads that got really thin, the fluid goes down and when you push the calipers back in, like I'm gonna show you, the fluid can go back up. It'll usually get too high if your brakes are way worn down. The easiest way to take out the excess fluid is with a turkey baster. Next thing that we're gonna do is jack the car up. So here's a jack stand right here. You're gonna need one jack stand. <clears throat> you can just do one side at a time. You're gonna look under. The jack points for this car is this thing right here. You might be wondering how we're gonna jack the car up because we need to put the jack, the jack stand there. So you obviously can't put the jack right there. So the easiest way to do it actually is <clears throat> we can just use the rear jack point here and then get it up high enough to where it lifts up the front tire off the ground. You know, the first thing you want to do, I have power tools here, I have an impact, but if you don't, <clears throat> you're going to want to loosen these up first with a big bar because when you once you get the wheel in the air and you try to loosen them, the wheel is going to spin. If you've already got it up off the ground and you're watching the video now, don't worry. You can either have a friend hold the front brake or you can just find like a piece of wood or something that's the right size. You only have to push down the front brake a little bit and then you'll be able to loosen up, loosen up by hand. So I'm going to show you how the jacking up works. And we've got the rapid pump technology here. When you're jacking off, I mean jacking something up, uh, you really want it to be as rapid as possible. It just, it really helps you get your nuts off quicker. Here is the rear jack point. It looks the same as the front one. I'm going to make sure that the thing is centered as good as possible when you do this. You don't want it to be on like the edge of the jack stand. There, so as you can see we're able to jack up the back of it and get the front up. The shorter and smaller your car, kind of the better that works too. Other things you can do, a lot of the cars will have jack points in the center under the front and rear so you can look under that or just search for it online. Other things there are other points you can use to put a jack under, like here's a good one here. On the bottom of the arm, you could put a jack stand right here, or a jack as well. It's a very good spot. Obviously the next thing you want to do is just remove all the bolts. Sometimes the wheels can get stuck on, they get rusted on in between the brakes, the brake hub and the inside of the wheel. If it does, what you want to do <coughs> The easiest way to do it is to turn around backwards like this and you kick the top of it. Now mine wasn't stuck, so that was super easy, but sometimes it can be really, really difficult to get off. The next thing that you want to do that makes it a lot easier is to turn the steering wheel all the way over so that this part is out here. That way you can get into the bolts around here. It makes everything a lot easier. Now first we're going to remove these two bolts here on the very outside and we're going to take that's going to remove this part those are usually either 14 millimeter bolts or 12 if you're working on like a really big truck or something that might be bigger now you can pull this out like this so now we need to push in the caliper the piston all the way back in so it's flush with this because the new brake pads are going to be a lot thicker and they're not going to fit over the uh, the rotor the way it is now. So the way I like to do it is with a clamp and you can use the old pads. So this came off with the pads. They just come out really easy. I like to just put the old pads in like this. That way the clamp can push onto there. Now this one, it just pushes in, but there are some that are gonna have this big like cross shape cut out into the middle. And those, they actually spin in. If you're not sure, just check out, you know, look up your car online. And you're going to need a, a tool. Those are actually a lot, kind of a lot easier. If you just find the right tool that works, you can just spin it in without having to use a clamp or anything like that. So, you know, you just spin the thing 
until it gets all the way full. just like that there until the brake pad is all the way up against the thing and I know these brake pads are still pretty thick, but the brakes are starting to squeal. And if it was my own car, I'd probably, I would for sure just keep using it, to be honest. But uh, this is for my business. I rent it out to people, so it, it can't have any brake noise. It has to be really perfect. What I like to do is you can just hang it up on the brake right there. Another thing you can do is like put something over here and rest it onto there. You kind of, you don't, I don't really like to leave it just dangling down because it's kind of, kind of can be hard on the brake line I feel like there, as you see uh, I definitely should have emptied some out before I did the second brake it's like it couldn't be any closer to overflowing but I don't think any actually overflowed somehow and this stuff is toxic so you should dispose of it correctly you can take it to like a toxic waste dump they, for free usually your shit city should have one and if you use the Detroit Axle brand brakes, like I'll recommend, they usually come with a little thing of brake fluid and brake cleaner, actually. So you might as well just empty all the old fluid out of this and replace it with that. If it's really black and nasty looking, you might want to uh, flush the whole brake system. Or if you do it the lazy way, you could just keep replacing this over and over again until it starts to become a lot more clear. Important, once you open a thing of brake fluid, I like to either use the whole thing within a month or throw it out. Brake fluid attracts moisture and once it gets too much moisture in it, it goes bad, it won't work. One time my friend gave me a really old thing of brake fluid that he had. I put it in a set of brakes, bled them properly. The, the brake fluid was so bad the brakes didn't move at all. So do not use old brake fluid ever. So if you have extra stuff, you know, replace the the brake fluid reservoir in another car try to just use it quickly and because you're gonna have to throw it out if you don't now this piece here always just has two bolts holding it on there's two back here these are usually 17 millimeter if you're working on something bigger you know that could be 19 millimeter but on cars like kind of just regular size sedans they're almost always 17 and since we moved this out now a lot of times you can get all these off with power tools too now I'm going to show you how to service uh, these like slider pins right here. You always want to buy a new boot kit before you start doing brakes. You always want to replace these. Uh, you can search disc brake caliper pin boot kit and then just like the name of your car on eBay or an auto parts store and you should have these. There should be two of these, well four of them if you're buying them for the front. And then they'll come with these little ring seals that I'll show you in a minute, and there's two of them. Because only one of these will have the seal on the inside, and the other one won't. It's really weird, but that's normal. So now we're just going to start pulling these things out. Sometimes they can be seized. If there are, I should look up some videos on that. I had one car, they were a freaking real pain in the ass to get out. But you're going to want to pull these out, and we'll start cleaning them. You want to first pull the boot back like that. It'll make it easier to pull the thing out, because it'll get rid of the suction. You're going to pull the boots off too. You're just going to spray all these down. Well, first, see there's that little uh, the O-ring kind of thing there. You're going to remove that. Spray all these down with a carb cleaner. If you get these Detroit axle brakes, they usually come with it. Spray some on the inside of these. You can use kind of Q-tips or I like to use compressed air to blow these out as well. And just clean everything off as good as, like, pretty well. If you use compressed air, make sure to grab like a rag around it like that the way the crap's not flying back all over the place so you need to put grease all over everything you can't use any grease you want to use a special like braking caliper grease um, like this stuff here I'll leave links for everything this has a big old brush on it so I like to put a bunch of it inside these boots like just stuff the crap in there it's just good to use a lot of grease We'll keep it greased up for a long time so it won't run out and use new boots so they're not going to rip but it'll keep the grease in there and then it's good when you put these back in it can make it a little easier to just put a little bit of grease around the outside there that way it'll just slide in there a lot easier Go bloop. And you don't need to apply grease on the inside of these we're just going to put them on the pin a lot easier so you're going to do both of those and then this little o-ring here you're going to put over but you do want to put a tiny bit of grease on it first to keep it from ripping or getting scratched you're going to grease up both of the pins you just kind of put quite a bit on there 
this little paintbrush thing is really handy and then you're gonna put it in now sometimes the one with the o-ring thing around it it can be harder you can kind of not want to go in try both of the holes um, you know you don't want to stick it in the wrong hole it doesn't really like it when you do that so one of them usually be a bit easier than the other one well you know some of the parts they have uh, let's just say slightly looser morals you can just stick it in either hole and it's totally fine either way all right so now you've got uh, both of the holes filled all double penetrated again so what you're looking for is obviously the seal needs to be all the way around the bolt there on the edge and then you should kind of push it and it should kind of bounce back slightly like that they should both move like that real smooth okay so now we're going to get this off and sometimes they'll have these little screws that kind of just keep it flush with it here these are already missing you know the last person that did the brakes didn't put them back on that's totally fine you do not need these things all they do is kind of keep the thing flush and they can make it slightly easier to just get these two caliper bolts back on but you really don't need them at all and a lot of times they're very hard to get off you don't want to use a power tool to try to get this off they're usually rusted in I would uh, recommend just spraying it with some WD-40 or something first you know you gotta luber up real good and if you having trouble getting it off you're gonna want to get one of those handheld impact uh, screwdrivers that you hit with a hammer uh, I'll try to leave a link for one of those too but they work really well now this one is just gonna come off like this if you have like a big truck or something like that this a lot of times it won't come off there'll be a big bolt here that you have to remove that as well and then there's going to be a bunch of grease in there too and you're going to need to get by uh it's like usually the grease is like pink or red it'll be called like a high speed bearing grease and you're going to want to just use that stuff and refill that again there's going to be like a big cap over over it here a metal kind of round half dome cap and then you have to remove the bolt underneath it to get the rotor off actually made a mistake i was thinking this hole was to uh secure the rotor like that but it's actually not because i remembered if your rotor is stuck on there you can't get it off a lot of them will have a hole like this you need to find a bolt that threads in there and then you can drill that thing in there and it'll pop the rotor off it's a super easy way to get it off when they're stuck i've used those many times and I would de definitely recommend this brand Detroit Axle. They seem to have most cars, at least like all my like 10 year old cars they have. They're super, super cheap. They're definitely not made in Detroit, they're made in China. But I have used tons of these things. I've used them until I had to replace them. I've never had any issues with them. And they almost always come with the brake fluid and the cleaner. And they come with all the hardware. I've never, uh, I don't think I've ever gotten the wrong parts. Never had any issues with them. And I'll try, I might edit in uh, just a screenshot of all my eBay receipts. I probably bought over 10 sets of brakes, 50, maybe 15 sets of brakes from these guys. I love them. They're so cheap. And before you use the rotors, you're going to want to take the uh, brake clean, spray it down, and wipe it off with a rag. The reason being is because they always come with a little bit of grease coating on them, and that's to keep them from rusting. So you want to do that on both sides of these rotors before you use them. Next thing we're going to do is replace all this little metal hardware. It'll look a bit different on every car, but it's pretty much the same stuff. Well, this one has two on each side. Usually there'll just be one bigger one. And if you don't replace this stuff, it's really not the end of the world. But Detroit Axle, they always come with it, so I always just replace them. And they come with the grease, too. When I'm putting them on, I like to put a bit of grease on here. And then also on the inside of the new ones where the uh where the sides of the pads are going to go and slide around yeah, so i just kind of squeeze some of the outside help it go in there and then squeeze some in there like that you know just always use lube never hurt all right so now that we got it all lubed up and ready to go you can get it back on and this is the orientation it goes in it goes around the uh rotor here i was calling it the wrong thing before and then it takes these two seven 17 millimeter bolts here or whatever yours are it's easier to put the one on top first get it loose just leave it loose before you tighten it all the way and then get the one started on the bottom too and then tighten them down all right we're almost done now we can put the pads on but some of the pads you have to install the brake wear indicator first easiest way is to just look at your old ones how they are some of them the brake wear indicator will already be on there you don't have to do it but with these 
you gotta put them on the end there. If you only have one pad that has a brake wear indicator, put it on the inside part that you can't see. A lot of times those will wear quicker. You'll be checking them on the outside, it'll look good, but the ones on the inside can wear a lot quicker and you can't see them a lot of the time. It's better to have it there. And the way you get them in is you gotta kinda keep it level. You can't have it real angled like that or they usually don't go in. And you just gotta start to slide Get both of the ends just started in there, and then you should be able to. No, well, it's like I was saying, you can't have an angle. A lot of times you gotta move them around until you can get it to go all the way back. So the pad should look like this. They should just line up with the rotor like that, and then we can put this piece back over the top. And when you tighten these down, this part can spin. So you usually need a wrench to hold this guy here while you turn the bolt there on the end. And these don't need to be super tight, especially on this, they're just 14 millimeter. Main thing is just don't over tighten them. Uh, if you're like brand new to working on cars, you might wanna get a torque wrench. It'll keep it so you tighten it the perfect amount. The main thing is don't over tighten them. Like you do not need to tighten these little 14s down as hard as you can. The 17s, you don't need to tighten those down as hard as you can either, but you can make those pretty tight. Now you should be ready to put the wheel back on, but before we do, I like to just double check all the bolts. So we had these two smaller ones here. Double check to make sure everything is tight and these two bigger ones on the back. It's really easy to forget stuff. I've done it once before doing brakes. So double check everything. Just double check that everything looks good. All the hardware looks good and safe and everything. And there's no loose or nothing looking weird. And then before I put the wheel back on, I like to turn it so it's straight again. It just makes it easier. Now I would definitely recommend using a torque wrench for the lug nuts, it's a lot smarter, but the main thing you want to do is tighten them all down in a certain pattern. So you go, you're going to tighten them down kind of not very tight at first. So you're going to go like this, tighten that one down, that one, you're going to go across from each other in a star pattern. You're going to get them just kind of tight. And then what you're going to, going to do is go around in the star pattern again, tighten them up all the way to the specified torque. You don't want to tighten down one like really, really tight and then do the other ones. It can kind of leave it kind of crooked or not seated correctly. If you don't have any power tools, you just get them all hand tight and then lower it back down, take it off the jack stand and then go around with your, uh, with your torque wrench. If you don't have a torque wrench, just make them like pretty tight, not really as tight as you possibly can. But let's say if you're using a ratchet about this size, then you pretty much want to make it almost as tight as you can around all of them. Most small cars, like a Civic, will be around 80 foot-pounds, and then like a truck might be around 100 or 110 or something. And then don't forget to put this cap back on, check the fluid level, make that correct. And then this is very important. Before you say you're done, you want to test drive the car. And when you first get into it, make sure to pump the brake pedal first. Just don't start driving because uh, the brakes could be mushy. So you want to pump it first. Before you even start the car, or right after you start it, make sure the pedal feels nice and tight, they're working again. Take it for a test drive, go drive it on the freeway, you know, go drive it around for like 10 minutes, especially if you're doing the job for someone else. You wanna make sure that you test drive it before that you completely finish the job.